one in eight. This statistic does stir up some anxiety among women because this refers to the lifetime risk of getting breast cancer. Breast cancer in women remains the leading cause of death. But those diagnosed with breast cancer today have a reason to be more positive about their outcome. Why is that? Because there are wider choices of treatment, more individualized treatment options for women and that can reduce the risk of recurrence and also lessen the side effects because of the treatment. If the disease is caught early, the survival in breast cancer is an astounding percentage of about 80 to 85, but it does drop to 25 or so if the disease has spread. So the key is to detect early. Women with a family history of breast cancer make up about 15% of all breast cancer. That means 15% of all breast cancers could be inherited or hereditary. Having a close relative, mother, aunt, daughter with breast cancer doubles the risk of obtaining breast cancer. Today, I'm going to talk to you about this genetic risk and ways and means of testing this risk. Only some people with this risk factor, which is a change in the genetic makeup, will develop cancer. What does this mean? A woman may have 45 to 65 percent chance of getting a breast cancer, but she may never develop breast cancer in her lifetime. While another woman may have a 25% risk of getting breast cancer, but she could actually develop the disease. While genetic testing pinpoints to the risk of getting cancers, this is very different from genomic testing, which is actually testing the tumor to understand the biology of the tumor and deciding therapies to treat that tumor. Whereas genetic testing is actually to understand the risk of getting this cancer. Every cell in our body is comprised of about 20 to 25,000 genes. These genes are tiny segments of DNA that carry the message to allow the cellular functions. One copy of each of these genes is obtained from your mother. One comes from the father. But during the lifetime, these genes can develop, evolve and uh, accumulate abnormalities or what we call as mutations that changes how these cells work. The mutations in two very important genes, BRCA1 and BRCA2, are the most common causes of hereditary breast cancer, also ovarian cancer, and this accounts for about 15% of all breast cancers. Usually, these genes, the BRCA genes, help in fixing the cell. They help to repair some uh, defects in the DNA and it helps the cell to uh, stop when it has to stop and it helps the cell to repair these defects. But if either of your parents carries these defects or mutations on the gene, then you have a 50% chance of inheriting that mutation. And if you have it, you could pass on to your children. If you inherit a BRCA1 or BRCA2, you have higher odds of getting breast cancer. Women who inherit the BRCA1 gene have a 55 to 65% of getting breast cancer by the age 70, whereas women who have a mutation in BRCA2 gene have a risk of about 45%. Men who carry these mutations also have a higher risk of developing breast cancer and they also could pass it on to their children. People who have these mutations on these two genes also have a higher risk of uh, developing secondary cancers later in life. At-risk families should of course get tested. You should uh, discuss with your doctor about genetic testing if you have a first degree family relative mother, sister, aunt, daughter with premenopausal breast or ovarian cancer detected at any age. If you were diagnosed with breast cancer, especially before menopause, and you have a blood relative with breast or ovarian cancer, you stand a higher risk. 
you were diagnosed with ovarian cancer and you have blood relatives who have had ovarian or breast cancers you should discuss this a male in your family has had breast cancer you or a family member has been diagnosed with bilateral breast cancer that means both breasts having a tumor or if you have developed the subtype called triple negative breast cancer before the age of 60 and of course this doesn't um, apply to Indian women but if you have a descendant in the Ashkenazi Jews then also you have a higher risk of developing breast cancer. What happens before genetic testing or how should you go ahead with testing once you know that there are risks and you have to do the test. There will be a counseling session where you will be counseled by a trained clinical geneticist about the risks of doing this test, understanding this test and during the educational session the counsellor will provide the risks and benefits of actually doing this test and answer any question that you may have regarding whether uh, you have to do the test or you what are the uh, risks if you don't do it. You will also have to sign a consent form. It's an agreement between you and your healthcare provider showing that you have discussed the pros and cons of doing the test. You understand the test and you will be explained the results of the test and how this affects how the knowledge affects you and your family everything will be explained by the counselor in this session and this is most important because the patient has to understand what the test entails and what he is up to what she is uh, going to understand from the test interpret the genetic test results a negative test means that that mutation on these two specific genes of BRCA1 and 2 has not been identified. This doesn't mean that you are not at risk of getting breast cancer. This only means that you are not at a risk of developing inherited breast cancer. Therefore, your risk of developing breast cancer is the same as anyone in the general population. A positive test means that a mutation known to raise risk of breast or ovarian cancer has been identified from your sample. That's what the positive test means. Women in these high risk categories who have the mutations in the genes linked with breast or ovarian cancer have to start their screening procedures much earlier earlier than when their blood relative was diagnosed uh, with cancer. They can also think of uh, surgeries which will uh, help in removal of these organs where this cancer is implied, therefore removing the risk or reducing the risk of getting breast or ovarian cancer. This also helps in detecting the cancer early. So if you know that you are carrying the mutation, you are at a higher risk. These screening procedures will help in catching the cancer early enough so it becomes a manageable disease in the clinic. As with all genetic testing, no test is 100% accurate. If the test is negative, it does not mean that the patient stands no risk of getting breast or ovarian cancer. That's not the meaning. If the test is positive, it doesn't mean that you will absolutely develop breast cancer in your lifetime. You may not. You just have the knowledge that that possibility is there. Now it's very important uh, as we think knowledge is power, sometimes ignorance is also bliss. So we have to understand how we will use this knowledge that we stand the risk of getting breast cancer and accordingly make life based decisions around this risk. What are the benefits of genetic testing? For some women, it means that there will be an informed medical and lifestyle decisions which will ease the anxiety and they can actually make better informed decisions. You can also make a decision regarding prevention with both medications and prophylactic surgery. What about privacy? The Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, the HIPAA Act of 1996, prevents insurance companies from denying coverage based on genetic information. So I urge you all, if you stand the risk and if you want to 
uh, understand your risk please do get the test done without having the fear that insurance may not cover your treatment that's not going to happen the act also prevents insurance companies from using the genetic information to determine that a health condition existed before that's also not going to happen in addition many countries and states have passed laws uh, or have legislation pending addressing these insurance concerns so it is protective overall so i urge you all to get the genetic testing done if you do stand the risk so to conclude I have given you some information I know about genetic testing in breast cancer. Of course, you can have more questions. If you do, please don't hesitate to get back to us at Shankara. Thank you.